Fingerboarding is pretty simple. You buy an overpriced miniature skateboard, place your fingers on it, and you are good to go. Even though fingerboarding is very simple, I still see a lot of people making mistakes when fingerboarding. So this video is gonna show you some of the simplest fingerboarding mistakes that you might be making. I know that when you're fingerboarding, you probably think you're doing everything right. And who knows, you might be doing everything correctly. But there are still some very simple things that you might be doing wrong. Let's jump into the first mistake. The first mistake is having your lock nuts too tight. This is one of those mistakes that's a little bit difficult to notice. I'm gonna use these wheels just so you can kind of see them spin. You're either doing this mistake having your lock nuts too tight or also too loose. This mistake is also sometimes hard to notice because this is what it looks like when your wheel is too loose. And this is what it looks like when it's just right pretty much no difference. A simple way to see if the wheels are loose is just by shaking the board and see what it sounds like. Having the wheels too loose isn't gonna damage the wheels or really anything on the board, but it's just gonna make it loud and also not that solid. But you can actually do damage to the wheel if they're too tight. I put this wheel on super tight and it's actually kind of hard to notice anything is wrong with it. The bearing has no room to move and also when I spin it, it's kind of rough. Just play around with how tight you have your wheels until you get it perfect. Right when I notice there's a little bit of room for the wheel to move in between the nut, I just tighten it down the tiniest bit more until it doesn't move at all. So having lock nuts too tight on the fingerboard actually can damage the bearings and leave your wheels running a lot more rough. Mistake number two, fingerboarding on a table that is not clean. You might be thinking the space you fingerboard on is pretty clean, but run your hand across and if you feel any sort of like grit on the table, that is bad for your fingerboard. If you have plastic wheels and your table is dirty, it's not really as big of a deal as urethane. Urethane wheels are quite a bit softer than plastic, so if your surface has a lot of like dirt and stuff on it, it's gonna get lodged in the wheels and it'll make the wheels feel a lot more rough. So before any fingerboard session, it's always a good idea just to make sure nothing is on the table. On the topic of cleaning your table before you fingerboard, you should also clean your wheels before you fingerboard. Like I was saying about urethane wheels, if there's something stuck on the outside of the urethane wheel, it's gonna get pushed deeper into the urethane. So grab some tape and clean your wheels before a session. This next mistake is so simple and so innocent, you might not even realize what's wrong about it. And that is putting your fingerboard in your pocket. I know we have all been there, we need to transport our fingerboard somehow, and the pocket is pretty convenient, but it might be wrecking your fingerboard. The problem with this is that your pockets have a lot of dust and material fibers in them. Extremely tiny bearings do not like that. If you're just putting a tech deck in your pocket, I'm sure that is fine, but bearings do not like dust. So next time you go to put your fingerboard in your pocket, just know that that is kind of bad for the bearings. The next mistake is something I see a lot of beginner fingerboarders make. And the mistake is buying a super high quality, super expensive deck before having any good parts. I have seen so many people's fingerboard setups that have a super expensive deck, but they're just using tech deck parts. I'm not telling you how to buy a fingerboard, but that's definitely not the best option. Investing in good grip tape, good wheels, and good trucks before you have a super nice fingerboard is definitely a good option. I'm not saying you need to use like a Hot Wheels deck for your entire life, but you definitely don't need a super expensive deck. This next mistake is something I don't see a ton of people do, but there is still people who do it. And that is putting the wrong size trucks on a board. Anything within like two millimeters is all right, but you definitely shouldn't be running a 29 millimeter board with 34 millimeter trucks. I put 34 millimeter trucks on 32 millimeter boards all the time, but that is not really too big of a problem. But having a board that looks like this, this is a problem. If you can see your wheels when you look over top of your board, those are too wide. This also makes certain tricks difficult to do just because it's like so unproportional, it just makes it awkward. The next mistake is kind of similar to having a super expensive board without good parts. And the mistake is buying a bunch of fingerboard obstacles before a good fingerboard. I feel like a lot of people have the mindset that having good fingerboard obstacles actually makes you better at fingerboarding, but it does not. Especially if you're a beginner, having something like a quarter pipe isn't really gonna help you get good at fingerboarding. Once you have a pretty good fingerboard setup, I would recommend just getting a simple obstacle like a ledge. 
having just a simple fingerboard ledge is going to build so many more skills than having a quarter pipe. The next mistake is actually something I used to do when I first started fingerboarding and I still see a lot of people do this. And that is rolling your fingerboard across the table way too fast. Like doing tricks way too fast. Now, first of all, rolling your fingerboard very fast across the table is kind of a bad habit, and it's also not too good for your bearings. Especially if your lock nuts are too tight or too loose, your bearings are gonna be rattling around way too fast. The next hack isn't to do with your fingerboard, but it's actually to do with an obstacle. And the mistake is putting way too much wax on an obstacle. If you have any obstacle that has metal as like the surface you're grinding, chances are putting wax on it is actually gonna make it more sticky. Because your trucks are made out of metal, sliding metal on metal is already pretty smooth and you don't really need to add wax. But if you do add wax, do not put very much. You really just need like one smooth pass over the whole surface and you are good to go. I'm just gonna put like a bunch of wax on to show how much more grippy it actually is. It's kind of difficult to show how much more grippy this is on camera, but this side glides nice and smooth with very little wax, but this side is so grippy. It just doesn't glide at all. And now my board has a bunch of wax on it. So do not put too much wax on obstacles. So those are some of the mistakes that I have made and also mistakes I see a lot of other people make. Comment down below what your worst fingerboard mistake was. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time.